And welcome again to the Hasidic approach to joy. We are starting on chapter nine. The topic is getting beyond the ich, uh, which is the Yiddish for I. Uh, Freud's, Freud's concept of the ego, right? So we're going to talk about this part of it uh, today. And, and I think what's funny is that, you know, we've talked about uh, a Fabringen before. When I was in rabbinical college, we had a, a Fabringen most Thursday nights. Most Thursday nights, there'd be a Fabringen. And then Friday, the schedule typically would be to leave yeshiva and go out into the community and uh, do community service type of projects of helping people put on tefillin um, and things like that. So that's uh, typically the project, the, the schedule in yeshiva. You know, Thursday night is a fabringen and Friday is extra time is spent out in doing community service projects. Um, but I, at the fabringens was always fun because this was a favorite topic. This was a favorite topic of Fabringen's was the ich, the I, uh, and getting over yourself. And so uh, typically that was easier to talk about with a few l'chaims. <laughs> so uh, uh, l'chaim and frabison. Frabison is uh, just something to eat to chase, you know, chasers, something to chase the, after, the, after the alcohol. So what we talked about last session was uh, Marirus versus Atzvus. We talked about Marirus as a, a depression, uh, and it's and how do you know the sadness of this depression versus Atzvus, which is a also type called bitterness. We translate as bitterness, and the pro, the primary distinction between the two is the outcome. Uh, the 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 Atzvus. The Atzvus is a depression that that drains your energy and, and doesn't lead anywhere. It just leads to, to sadness and, and, and a lethargy. Whereas the marirus, the bitterness, impels you into doing something about it. It's a bitterness that, that creates action to get things fixed, to make, a, to make things better. And so that's what we talked about last time. And, and what, the topic we're gonna to talk about is, you know, you can have these feelings and you're not necessarily sure about where it's going to but you wonder where it's coming from. What's the source of, of this and, and the distinction between the two? And that's the topic of, of today's discussion is really where these are coming from. And, you know, we've said that you, if you, you know, if you can, the, the blessing is you can only think about one thing at a time. And so you have the choice to push the, the bad thoughts away with both hands, to change your thought process, think about something else, Choose something you want to talk about, uh, you want to think about, and focus on that, and draw your energy there. And you can only think about one thing at a time, so you can be able to distract yourself to, to focus on something else. But but where do the thoughts come from? Where where is this, you know, this these feelings coming from? And another term we talk about in Hasidic philosophy is yeshus. Yeshus is the self, and it's important to have self-esteem. It's critical to have self-efficacy, to be able to accomplish anything in life, to get anywhere in life. One has to have sufficient self-esteem to be able to do that. And that, that's important. But when we're talking about yeshis, we're typically talking about being self-absorbed. It's not just a healthy self-esteem, but rather, it's being so totally self-absorbed that, that, that's, that that's the core of everything. And it's a critical piece here because the distinction is what we're going to do. Is what we're going to do the mission, the, the goal, the objective? Or is it what it's going to do for me? And I think that's the biggest uh, distinction between where this is going to go, you know, is the ego caught up with um, what this is going to do for me, or what will get accomplished? If if it's about me, if it's about myself, and I'm caught up into myself, then you know, life life has its challenges, and stuff is going to happen, and a person who's caught up in self is going to be um, is going to be their self-esteem is going to be damaged by what happens. 
if it's about the mission didn't get accomplished, um, you know, then, then it's not about I'm, I'm bad or I didn't get something done or something. It's about the mission. The mission didn't accomplish. And it, it's not about me. It's about the mission. So then it doesn't, it doesn't hurt us as much. It doesn't diminish us as, at, at the same way. But if, if it's about um, myself, then, then I failed. I, I'm bad and that's destructive to me and I, I don't want to accept that. And so therefore I have to blame someone else or blame something else. And, 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 and you know, that's, it becomes, you know, more about my own self-esteem than anything else. So if we focus on the mission and we see this when we talk about soldiers that, that you know, have post-traumatic stress disorder you know, PTSD and things that, that are suffering, sometimes it's, it's interesting. You could have the same mission. And if, if on the mission, someone knows exactly what they have to do and they do that and they accomplish it. And, and, and that's one thing, but someone who was, you know, missed the mission or um, their part of the mission didn't get failed. They're the, they're the ones who then can suffer uh, because of the the lack of accomplishment, but but they're blaming it on themselves, you know. And it's and, and when it's all about me, then it's it's a sense of self uh, of, of failure, and and that that makes it you know much more difficult to challenge. Um, Yeshus is about the, the ego, the selfishness. It's 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 about me. So if if I didn't accomplish the mission and it's about me, then it's my personal failure. If it's about the mission, the mission failed, then I can still go on. It didn't, you know, I was a part of this and I tried to help and it, it didn't work, but, you know, I did my best. And so that's a much healthier projection is, is if it's about the mission, not about, you know, my personal success in something. Um, the opposite of, of Yeshus is, is Bittel. Bittel means uh, selflessness or, or nullification. And so if someone is seeking to, to accomplish the goal, it's not about them. It's about the goal. So there's this bittel, there's this self-sacrifice that is towards the greater good, towards the greater goal. I can put myself aside because the mission is that important. And so, so that's a very healthy concept. The bittel, the selflessness, is a very healthy accomplish. In fact, it, it's so powerful because when one is involved in something which is greater than self, then there's a self, there's a set, there can be a sense of a, a sense of accomplishment, whether the mission succeeds or not. We put our all into it. And a person can come away with a healthy feeling, even if the mission didn't get accomplished. But if it was about Yeshus, it was about me and it didn't get accomplished, then I failed. Then it's personal. And that, that can be self-destructive. So what we want to be looking at is, is the bigger mission. Uh, the example, one of the, one of the examples he gives about it, uh, you know, uh, Majeski talks about here, is the self-awareness that can be detrimental. You know, he, he talks about the example of if you're getting on a bus, you're aware of that you're stepping on the bus and you're putting the coin in the, in, into the, you know, and you're paying for it and everything, you get finding a seat and, and, and you're not, absorbed into that so much you're just getting the task done but if for example you're making a presentation you're going on stage you're being watched now it's all about me and what are they going to think and that now affects my self-esteem and, and how am i going to do and how will i be perceived you know then we can get wrapped up into it in, in a negative sense and that can be very uh, detrimental so again the, the yeshus is, is about me. The bittel is selflessness because it's not about me. It's about the mission. It's about what has to be accomplished. So by being able to dedicate ourselves to a higher purpose. Um, so Ron, I wanted to ask you how this applies in the medical field. Because he gave an example. He was talking about you know, how physicians can feel about this. Whoop. 
Well, I, there's a tendency to take our failures as personal. I mean, I mean, we didn't accomplish a mission. That's true, but it's hard to separate that from personal feelings of, of feeling bad. That you know, it's not a lasting de depression, but it's not. It's not the same as saying, "Well, I, I didn't accomplish my mission," and, and moving on. Right. But if it's about the ego, if it's about my performance, uh, I, I don't think the ego really enters into it because we're all smart enough to know that we, we can't always accomplish the mission. Mm -hmm. Do you know any doctors that, uh, that the ego was definitely involved in and how it affected them? Well, I guess there are a lot of, traditionally there are a lot of surgeons like that, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I know there's a lot of burnout now, but I don't think that's ego related. That's this stress of the situation, the stress and the, the hours they have to keep because of the pandemic. Right. Yeah, no, I, I hear that. I hear that. Um, I, I do a laugh though. I, I remember that uh, amongst pilots, there tends to be a healthy ego as well. And I, and, and the running joke is uh, there's an emergency and someone calls out, is there, is there a doctor in the house? And the pilot says, well, I'm a, phys I'm a pilot. <laughs> um, but I guess that's, you know, I, I think that's the, the, the question becomes, you know, the, the ego part. If, if, if it's about, if a person's ego is wrapped up into it, and, and he loses a patient, that's got to be far more devastating than the physician who is dedicated to the cat task. And it's about the mission. It's about the, you know, it's about the patient. And if you lose the patient, you know, that certainly can affect your, your morale, but I think it would be less devastating than, you know, if, if it's all about you. You know, these days, it, when, when you're on a plane, some and the stewardess asks, is there a doctor in the house? There are a lot of physicians that are afraid to reply yes. I mean, that never affected me, but I've, I've heard about it because yeah. there are that has legal to, consequences. I think that has to do with the other profession that has a, a, a large ego called yes. the law profession. Yes, I'm sure it does. Yeah, the liability is, is huge there. Yeah. Right. Um, there was a, uh, in the story, one of the stories he shared here also was about uh, a podiatrist who was focused on, uh, was thinking about all the muscles and all the bones that working in the feet and, and how the foot and then the ankle and the knee and, and, and then the movement in the waist. And, and, and he got, was really thinking about it and he got so caught up into every movement he was making and the muscles involved that he, he literally got paralyzed and couldn't walk because he was so Wow. micro focused on on how how this functions right uh, that reminds you there's this issue of reflexology where there are a lot of centers in the feet that are supposed to affect other organs in your body and i'm not into that so i don't i don't know how true it is i'm, I'm skeptical yeah yeah is it isn't that field called acupuncture reflexology no, it, is it, is a pressure point it's right. related to acupuncture, yeah. but it's more, it's, it's more like acupressure. Oh, yes. Right, right. Um, but, but, the, but the over focus, uh, because I can think back on, I don't I remember, um, I remember at some point getting, thinking about my breathing. Uh, I was practicing conscientious breathing so that I could, you know, to relax myself and things, but I got so caught up in, in, in the, the breathing piece that I stopped breathing <laughs> and then gasp and then let go, you know. <laughs> but uh, hyper-focus, if it's about us, it can be actually detrimental. And that's the yeshus part about things is, is getting so, uh, you know, over-focused. Uh, the other example I, I love that, that he shares here is, is, you know, the guy who says, comes up to the rabbi and he asks the rabbi, Rabbi, do you sleep with your beard over the blanket or tucked under the blanket? And the rabbi hadn't thought about it, but of course now it's on his mind and he goes to sleep and you know he can't sleep because he's trying to figure out conscientiously what, 
what what naturally happens <laughs> <laughs> but that again when you get when you get too over focused and caught up in yourself it, it's not it's not productive it's not productive so uh, being self-absorbed uh, doesn't work. So, so we go back to the idea of, of Yeshus and Bittel and how those affect Atzvus and Mariris. Atzvus is, is that, bit, that, that self-absorption that a person can get you know, all depressed because things aren't going our way. It's not what I wanted. It's not the way I wanted it to go or expected it to go. And, and therefore, it, it's about me and we get upset and then that can lead to depression, and that's not productive. That's not productive. Well, I, I tell you, every time that happens to me now, where things seem to be going wrong, I remind, I remind myself of the first lesson where everything happens for the for the good, but we just can't see it at the time. But that's that's very helpful. I actually think that way. Perfect. That's that's a great feedback because once we start to stop real, when we start to think about. Everything happens by divine providence. God's in charge. It really is good. We just may not be able to see it as good. Uh, and then we can let it go because we're not in charge. And, and that's the healthier way of, of the, the, the bitterness, the bittle. A person who's bittle, it's all about the mission. It's all about what God wants to happen in the world. And so therefore, uh, if it, it's not about me, because he's bittle, he's nullified to the mission, right? He's nullified whatever God wants. So when things don't go his way, so so we can have the mariris, the bitterness that that leads to action. The mission wasn't accomplished. What do I have to do to get the mission accomplished? And and it's all about the, the mission, not about me. So then you know we can push forward to get something done because you know we, we want something to happen, or we can say, okay, well, obviously that's that's God's will, and. Uh, so my example today, this, this one was at the, uh, the military chaplain's retreat weekend, I had been asked to speak Shabbos afternoon during the meal as part of the entertainment during the meal. And I wanted to make a good impression and I wanted to, to say something that was meaningful. So I'd, I thought about it and I wrote out a whole presentation and then I practiced it in my mind numerous times because I wouldn't have a, a script to work with on Shabbos. This is literally why people are eating? Are while there, people are eating, sorry. yes. Oh, yeah. Terrible position to be in. <laughs> but it's a good crowd because they've had, they've made Kiddush, they've had the challah, they've had the first course, and before dessert comes, it's a time to, to share. And, and I was ready, I was prepared, I thought I had a good presentation, it was really good. And then the facilitator actually was calling up a couple of different people to, to share you know, active service members about their story. And a young man in the Navy was called on. This was his first retreat weekend and he was asked to step up and share a few words. No one was prepared for what he said. He got up and talked about his childhood, the challenges of childhood, losing a parent, a divorce, his, he talked about his time in the Navy. He talked about himself getting married and then getting divorced and at, at a point where he'd reached his lowest ebb and he really was serious about suicide. He, every single day he talked about jumping off the ship. And then he talked about his commander gave him a 45 day leave to participate in a fully paid trip to Israel uh, on a Jewish retreat program and spending time at a yeshiva while he was there and, and really seeing the divine mission, really picking up on the divine mission and coming back on a high, not following up on his learning, but, but he found a Jewish girl and he got remarried and they're very happy. And then he came to this retreat and was reminded about the learning to be learning Torah on a daily basis and that part of it and, and how, how the high that he's on being at the retreat, how amazing it is, how being, you know, getting his rudder back in line and, and, and knowing the direction he wants to take and, and where to take it and how to take it, you know, and having a, a renewed sense of mission, but a divine mission, a greater mission. This guy spoke from the heart he teared up while he was talking. 
there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Wow. And after he spoke, the people, a lot of people came up to talk to him and to give him a hug and to thank him for sharing. And I went up to the facilitator and I said, I know I'm on your roster to speak. You don't need any other speakers. <laughs> the mission of someone speaking this afternoon has been so well accomplished. There's nothing anyone else can say that's going to make this any better. You don't want anybody else to talk. So just take me off the roster. <laughs> I keep thinking about the wisdom of his commander to send him off on that trip. Yeah. Pay for it. I mean, that's quite a guy. Yeah. Well, again, I think that's, you know, if you think about it, the commander had the mission in mind. Yes. But how many commanders would think to do that? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I'm thrilled because this, this young Navy man will be up for shift command within the next 18 months. Wow. He will be given command of a ship within the next 18 months. And he has seen good leadership. Yes. So bravo. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I could have been caught up in my getting to speak and then, you know, I can't follow that act. So that could be depressing, right? But, but if, I'm, I have, if I have a bittle and it's not about me, but it's about the mission, the mission is to have someone speak who can stir the audience and, and, and give focus and direction. Man, this guy was great. <laughs> he, he spoke from the heart. He, he, he hit everyone in the heart and it, and it was just phenomenal. And I was just so excited to hear what he had to say and to be touched by what he had to say that, um, wow, the, the mission was accomplished, you know? It was, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And, uh, and I'm thrilled because that morning during prayer services, but in a break during prayer services, and uh, he, he and I were sitting together with a few other people and I gave a word to our Torah about, about Purim and, and, and things. And, and I asked him, I said, do you want to learn? Do you want to join a class like we're doing here and now? Do you want to join a class or have a one-on-one -on -one or something? And he said, yes. And, and I had no idea his story, but he made a commitment that he and I are going to learn one-on-one. -on -one. And, and, then, and then I heard his story. And I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to be part of the, this ongoing success, to be able to learn with him and, and, and be a part of, of the, the future successes. So um, very exciting weekend, week, week long retreat and uh, an exceptional program by Aleph Institute. Uh, they're they're a, a, a Department of Defense endorser for the, the Jewish world. And the, these retreats are, are every year are just phenomenal. Uh, retreats, not only for the chaplains and the lay leaders, but the Jewish service members who come to attend. It's, it's a phenomenal program. So, uh, but again, I, I think about the people that are leading this, the, um, you know, we'll go back to, again, you know, the, the yeshus that can lead to, uh, to, to atzvus depression, um, or the, the bitl that can lead to marirus, right? So, they were, you know, they were not sure they were even going to be able to put on a, re a retreat weekend this year because of COVID. And then in the last two months, they finally, they were bold and they decided we're going to do this and we'll do a hybrid. And those who can come because they're, they've had their vaccines, they've had, you know, their, their antibodies because they were exposed to it and had the, you know, we can, we can do a hybrid of, you know, live, at, you know, live attendance as well as virtual. And, and they, they knew the mission. And they didn't get depressed because they couldn't do it, but rather they had the marirus, the bitterness of, being, of not being able to do it, which caused them to find a way to do it because it was about the mission, not about themselves. And so, again, a perfect example of what you know, the right way to do this is, is to have the bitl, the selflessness, to be focused on the mission that has to be ac accomplished. And when it's not being accomplished, to have the, the marirus, the bitterness, to find a way to do this and not get caught up in depression or something like that so you know, how they handle shabbat on zoom i mean i that, gather that's a problem for the orthodox community uh, yeah so that that part wasn't recorded okay that part was not on zoom and it was not recorded it was not a part of it so um, they all miss his speech his talk 
The, yeah, so the people that were online did not catch that. Yeah. That's a shame. Yeah. But he was so good. I, I can't, I, I imagine he'll be one of the speakers next year. <laughs> <laughs> he was really good and he was a powerful speaker. I mean, he really has his act together and, and it was, it was very, very exceptional. So, so finishing up the class for today, bottom line is that what causes depression. And again, I'm not talking about medical depression. I'm talking about depression from, you know, from actions or whatever. That comes from Yeshus. It comes from being caught up in oneself and obsessed with their own ego and everything being about their purpose, about themselves. Whereas when someone's focused on, on God's purpose, God's mission, it's not about them. It's not about their own ego. Then when something goes awry, it's not about them. So they can have marirus of bitterness that propels action to do something again focused on the mission what else can we do to get the mission done it's not a personal dejection it's not a personal failure it's more about you know what do we need to do to get jobs got you know jobs a goal done and accomplished in the world and so it's not about me it's about the goal it's about the mission and therefore it's a much healthier mental place to be in uh, so l'chaim <laughs> thank you very much and uh, both of you enjoy the snow but you know use common sense about how much to shovel at one time absolutely absolutely okay i'll look forward to seeing you next week both take of care you. god bless bye-bye now bye-bye